Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. We're going to be introducing a hotly anticipated new feature of Cloud Radial, Assessments and Checklists. It's the direct result of hundreds of feature requests from you guys, our partners, so we hope you like it. It was one of many updates during November. If you haven't already, you can get more information about all of our updates on our support site, as well as on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash cloudradial. Out of all of them though, we seem to be getting the most interest in assessments. So we thought we'd take some time today to show it off. And if we have any time at the end, take a few questions. This is our first crack at it. So if you'd like to see uh, improvements or additional functionality, be sure to let us know what that is by submitting a feature request in your partner portal in the partner account section on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Jeff and Ricky for a rundown of this exciting new feature. And I'll be back at the end to ask them your questions. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, feel free to leave questions in the comments, like, subscribe, et cetera, and we'll answer them there. So Ricky, Jeff, how were your isolated Thanksgivings? Well, except for working on assessments, they were great. <laughs> I, was, I was eating deli slices of turkey while Zoom calling Jeff, so pretty good, not too bad. <laughs> so I think good. we're thankful that it's out, so that's good. So Thanksgiving's today for us, um, <laughs> so we'll go from there. So. Uh, so to get into assessments, uh, thanks Seth, uh, for setting things up. The, um, it has been the top requested feature for quite a while. And it's really been something we've, we've taken our time with because we've looked at the market and we've basically looked at the things that were out there and looked at not only the things that were in the MSP space, but also took a hard look at the things that were out there for professional audits as well. Things that companies were paying, you know, hundreds of dollars a month for, uh, for just the auditing tool. And so when we went about building the assessments, we really were focused on building something that was um, not just a me too product out there, but something that would have uh, a lot of capability well beyond, um, well beyond its time. So one of the things that in doing the assessments, you know, assessments are preparations for an audit. And one of the things that we learned early on in the research was, you know, the audit is where things, where you get a grade and a, and a, and a result, right? So audits, you failed the audit, you succeed at the audit. Um, and basically from an MSP perspective, you're audited every day in security and your procedures uh, and the way you work with clients. And sometimes you succeed at most times you succeed at those, at those, uh, capabilities, occasionally things fall through the cracks. And so when they fall through the cracks, you develop a set or assessment so that you won't be caught by that a second time. So assessments are the preparation for the audit and they're your way of getting ready for anything that may come your way. Um, and then they're also uh, a way to grow from there. So lots of things that you can assess. Um, and so we've designed the tool not to focus on not it's it is an MSP tool because there are some things in there that are very focused on uh, on the managed service provider space, but it's it's at its base too just a very solid assessment tool that's designed to work through a variety of different assessments that you want to do. So if you think about these as things you're going to be tested on, either things that you're going to be tested in a in a government review or being tested by the client or even by uh, uh, rogue malware then these assessment or these these are your exams and, and your assessments are basically your study materials uh, to to measure up for those exams the, the important thing about assessments and one of the things we've really tried to do in this is assessments summarize your best practices right so every time you've made a mistake in the past it goes on your checklist somewhere so again you don't make the same mistake twice you may make new ones but you try not to make the same ones over and over and assessments are your fundamentally are your checklist for making sure that your procedures are getting better and better over time. And so as you work through these assessments and as you work through these things, one of the things that stands out really quickly is that as you ask these questions, not all questions have the same consequences. And so assessments can't be just a checklist of yes, no, yes, no, you also have to be able to look at those assessments and determine the results of those questions and figure out the questions that you really want to spend time and money on, because it's not enough just to um, look at the, you know, the score of the assessment, because that's one, that's one quantitative metric, 
but you also want to be able to look at the um, the impact that those things have. So things that have low impact and and low likelihood, I mean, they might be expensive to do, they might be uh, inexpensive to do, but again, the the risk of those occurring are very high and are very low. So um, again, you want to spend your time and energy on the things that really move the needle. And as you'll see in the assessments, we actually cover that, I think, fairly well. Just uh, the, the key things in Cloud Regal's approach, and, I, I, and it, this is, again, talking to hundreds of MSPs, and we can't thank everyone enough for, for sharing with us. Uh, they've been providing uh, solid feedback, spreadsheets, brochures, everything that they, you know, that they were using today. We, I think we've seen at least one version of that. And one of the things we focused on early on was the ease of use in and out of Excel, because almost everything seems to exist in Excel file somewhere um, and it gets shared around. Um, so again, we've made it easy to get data not only into from Excel, but actually you can, you can move it back and forth from Excel. So you can work your assessment, export to Excel, make changes in Excel, and then update that back to update the assessment. So it's Excel integration is very strong. Uh, we also want to be able to show your value to clients. So we want to be able to run these assessments and let your client, let you present that to the clients, or at least internally, if nothing else, to be able to see the progress you're making from one assessment to the other. Um, assessments, because again, we're a client facing assessment. Um, we've actually built in a way for you to task questions to multiple people so that you can have your client do some questions. You can have different people on your, on your service team do questions, your account manager do questions. You can task those out in the assessment. Uh, and track all of that. Uh, we're keeping detailed information on each question. So again, you can make this simple. And uh, again, the, the product's gonna, as Ricky will show you, is very uh, straightforward and you can make it very simple, but you can also make it very complex. And so uh, as you assign additional risk and remediation info to it, it becomes, uh, we want the assessments to become your basis for an operations manual uh, for the way that you work and engage with the client. Again, it is client facing. Uh, we've done some stuff too to make sure that we can use the data that we're already gathering. So you can replicate templates in the assessments based on the data that's already there. And one of the things that's the start of something that people have been asking for a long time and you'll see replicated throughout other areas, which is planner integration. So as you work with an assessment, you work with the costing on the assessment, you can feed that back to the planner, you can link from the planner back to the assessment and you can update the pricing on the assessment and see that back in the planner. So we've really done a lot of things in the uh, assessments to make them stand out um, in the marketplace, but also really try to hit uh, the productivity there. So uh, there's still a lot of work to do. So before you even ask, um, the answer is yes. Um, so you will see uh, more reporting or reporting uh, that you can take and, and print off and take to the clients. Uh, where you're going to see more sample templates from us. Uh, you're also going to see we're working with other uh, vendors out there so that we can get their data into the assessments because it's not just the typical uh, checklist. So we're working with um, uh, a variety of different areas to, again, to go not only assess client business, but also to assess your own business. So again, you're going to see a lot of content. Uh, Seth particularly is working really hard to work with these vendors to bring that content in. And then lastly, ticketing, because again, every time you find a problem in, in the assessment, you should be able to easily create that ticket in, in the PSA. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ricky and we can go um, see the see our new baby. Let's do that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get some control over here real quick, please. All right. And are you able to see my tenant right now, Jeff? Yep, law looks good. Perfect. All right. So yeah, like Jeff said, uh, the easiest way I think for most people to understand this is to get a to get a good look at what it actually does in app. And again, it's been out not that long. Some things have already changed slightly, but for the most part, I think it's a strong, strong start to what I think is going to be a really useful feature for a bunch of you guys. So, I mean, if you're in your portal, obviously I'm in my test one, Ricky's MSP. I use this a lot for demo purposes. You're going to find assessments under the compliance section under the feature set because it is, of course, part of kind of our, our greater strategy for reporting. So whenever we go into there, you have the assessments module, cool. And you can see right off the bat, I've got a couple things in here. Um, now, generally speaking, the breakdown of assessments kind of goes into these three buckets. You've got the assessments themselves. 
You've got the templates, which are functional assessments as well, as we'll see in a second. And we've got the archives where you can store assessments and their relevant data if you want to kind of move it up and not delete it if you want to keep that stuff. So the core thing, and I've been thinking a lot, because again, as kind of the trainer and coach of Cloud Radio, I think about what the easiest entry point for a lot of people to get into this is. And as I learned personally, you know, kind of when I thought through assessments uh, and speaking to it with Jeff, it's a lot more complex than you think with all the different things you have to consider as things change over time, historical data, updates, who did this, who did this, changing this, many, many things, many moving parts. So I think the easiest way to look at it right now is we'll start initially in this demo just by looking at it in app. And then I'll also do a little bit of a demo of uh, what it looks like to actually import an Excel file and see how Cloud Radio spits that out into a Cloud Radio formatted assessment. So first things first, we're gonna ignore my current ones and we're gonna go ahead and click on add at the top right to kind of build a frame of the assessment, right? And when I do that, the first thing we're gonna notice is I'm gonna be able to name it whatever I want. So in this case, let's just go throw a little test title on there. And the description just tells you, you know, what we're assessing. So we can also just throw a little test description on there. So as Jeff was saying, it's a powerful tool because you can make it visible to the partner only, right? So if you wanna run the assessment for your own purposes for the individual clients, you certainly can. And that's what this option is gonna do by default. If you'd like to make it something that is both collaborative and client visible, you just toggle that over to client visible and that's cool. And then the status, right? Obviously I haven't started it. We can mark this one as in progress and we can even do a recommended interval. And we'll see how this ties in in a bit. Basically the idea here is that you don't just have to do one-time assessments. If you wanted to, you could mark them to be done every set amount of time. And then from a global overview menu, you're gonna see what upcoming assessments you have. So that way you can kind of keep track of what you should be doing. But again, right now, we're just building the frame to house the questions right now. This is just a, a general thing. So we'll roll it just once for now. So here we go. So I've made my new one. Here it is down at the bottom, my test assessment. Now, what's going on is I have that frame. I have no questions in there and we have to build that process out. So again, first try, we're gonna do this directly in app and it's pretty easy, right? It may be a little bit timely because like Jeff said, it could be super easy or very complex. That's up to you, but I'll show you the gist. The majority of management of assessments are going to be done through our three dot menu. Now, people that are familiar with Cloud Radio use this a lot for lots of different things. Namely, you'll notice that in areas like the client list, right? If you've ever used Cloud Radio before, you know that we do a lot of management with the three dots to like impersonate, jump between stuff, view things. That's going to be really key in the assessments module because if you try to click on stuff, it's probably not going to do what you initially expect. You see, it went straight to a blank screen. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the three blue dots and we're going to start by editing this and we're going to actually edit this and add questions to it so when it pops up we can of course rename redo all the stuff that we just marked but most importantly we're going to move over to the second tab to actually add questions within the assessment and from here it's relatively straightforward it's kind of like uh, again if you built a ticket in cloud radial think of this kind of like building your question flow within a ticket right you'd go through we've got no questions we're going to use the same add functionality at the top right to get into it we hit that and then here we go we start to build the individual question now this first page uh, is kind of about the the notes, right? The the details to the ticket itself. And I, I personally don't have anything for right now, but this is where maybe later on down the line when you actually do an assessment run, you might wanna add additional things for the partner to do, for the, uh, you know, the, I'm sorry, the, the company to do, or you guys as the partners, you can flag it, you can mark the owner of the tasks. For the sake of simplicity for right now, I'll skip this, but we may come back to it. Really, we're gonna go straight to the second tab for format. And this is where you can start to create a category for your questions that'll kind of group like questions together, which is gonna be key for reporting. And then we can actually ask the question we want, right? So in this case, we can just throw like, you know, category one, category, category one, there we go. And we'll just write question one, just to keep it simple. And the first thing that you're gonna to see too is other than the category and the question, we're able to dictate what type of responses are possible for this. Now, what these are right here that you're seeing, yes, no, compliant, not compliant, is kind of a global set and you can, modify what the global set of questions is as well, which is really great, not only for customization, uh, but also for localization. So that means that if you wanna have, you know, maybe you don't wanna have something as generic as my question one, you wanna say, do they have the right, you know, what type of AV do they have, for example, you could, you know, make the answers like Sophos, Trend Micro, this or the other, you can actually go back and do that. But for right now, you know, this is the, the kind of default set that all of you will see in your tenant to start off with. And I'll show you how to modify that as well in a bit. Uh, you can also choose a freestanding text one. So if it's got to be a written in answer and it's got to be a little bit more details, certainly possible, not a problem. So for right now, simple, we'll keep it yes, no. We kind of move on after that, right? So we start to get to the risk profile of the question. And this is where I think it gets interesting for the client, right? Because as a client facing tool, if the assessment is going to be built into uh, the tool for the client, 
we kind of have to do a little bit more hand holding. It's not good enough to just throw numbers and, and things on there going yes, no, this, that, 1.1.4. We want to help the client understand why we're coming up with these things and what we want to we want them to do, right? So it'll show you underneath as well the explanation of why this is asked. We say, you know, explanation. I'll show you where that goes in the field as well. The evaluation criteria. Lots of uh, assessments have this for the purpose of helping the technician, helping the assessor find out what exactly they need to do, right? So if you, this needed to, uh, you know, we needed to scan some systems, we needed to send out somebody to do desk checks to make sure that there's certain controls in place, stuff like that this is to help you actually find out what needs to happen there. So we'll also write eval criteria here. Let me interject one thing on this criteria piece, which sure. is uh, one of the things that came back a lot was trying to remove the subjectiveness of different surveys. Um, so again, if you've got multiple technicians, especially when you're comparing results over time, uh, then basically whoever evaluate it can say it's fine or it's bad. So we want to try to remove as much of that as possible. And so the criteria lets you determine what your criteria are for a, a compliant or non-compliant answer. And so basically if multiple technicians run this multiple times, you should get consistent results if the evaluation criteria is, is informative enough to help with that. Sure. I think you'd mentioned that was the difference between like a qualitative and quantitative assessment too, right? I mean, that was like the, 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 the challenges again, subjectivity and objectivity. And I think this is what is going to help you keep it objective. If right. You have the kind of the same parameters, um, as we work our way down, right? Jeff, a moment ago showed the, that chart with the likelihood, you know, kind of like that risk matrix, this control type likelihood risk and risk cost and impact. These drop downs here are going to help you build that out for these questions, right? So, if this theoretical, not real question is a preventative question, right? Maybe the likelihood of this happening is actually almost certain. The risk involved uh, in this question, you know, if something goes wrong with this is severe and the cost to fix it is negligible, obviously that's gonna be a no brainer to get done, right? So impacts, well, how hard would the impact be? Let's say this is very high. Um, again, we'll see how this plays out in a moment when we do the visualization. Uh, the reference information, this is if you're actually referring to another thing, you know, like maybe you've got another control, you've got additional documentation that shows more information about it. This doesn't play into anything currently, but when we do end up with the uh, the report layouts and, and the reports of the entire assessment, will kind of serve to be part of the, uh, the executive summary of all these questions as well. So we can skip that for now, but that'll come in handy uh, later. Uh, next tab, remediation, right? We go through the remediation. This is what does it take to actually apply the fix, right? Not just the why, but the how. So when we go through, right, I would write my, my one sentence summary real quick in this case, right? We would just say remediation summary. And the remediation plan is where if you wanted to, you could kind of break down a more, um, a more in-depth plan that kind of shows, you know, the, the gist of steps that need to happen to fix this thing. So we can just write steps for remediation. Cool. And then the next two steps over here are optional, but obviously certainly really helpful if you're trying to get a ticket out of this or get a work order. It's to actually help the client figure out what would be the cost to fix this, right? So in my theoretical example, again, I know I didn't actually attach anything real. Let's just say it would take one project to do so, so one project unit, and it's gonna cost $1,000 to fix that thing, right? To make sure that this question is, is fully handled, should it be found non-compliant. But again, of course, you could do monthly recurring ones, and we have the unit prices, which are the ones that are actually shown to the clients, as we'll see in a second, but we also have the unit costs that are the cost to you, and this will not be visible to the client. Again, that'll come in really handy when we have more integration with uh, with like projects and stuff, and, and you'll see how that all ties into a kind of a, a greater Cloud Radio master plan. And like Jeff was saying, we don't have the ticket integration yet, but that's kind of something we're thinking about right now. So what we see in the next three tabs, I'm not gonna go over these necessarily, they're the routing checklist and script tabs. They're the same ones that we use for current tickets in Cloud Radio. So this is where, when the ticket does get opened, you basically can choose where it goes. And if you wanna have checklist items with that ticket, or if you wanna have some, some PowerShell scripts to be attached with the tickets, right? So again, for right now, since that feature is not there, these don't do anything just yet. If you wanna set them up ahead, that'd be cool for, for pre-gaming, but for the most part, you can ignore that as well. So now that I'm done, I've kind of filled out my question. I hit submit, that's question one, right? And truthfully, right, if I hit uh, submit, I would be done with this. But but the fact of the matter is that most of the time, you're probably gonna have something that's far more intricate than this. I mean, we have a, a NIST assessment that we uploaded as, as part of our sample content. I think that is like 110 questions. So obviously, while this is easy to do, you just kind of go through and fill it out, it's not terribly scalable. So we'll kind of show you what the faster way to do this is, but that's kind of what it is for now. 
Uh, the last thing on the assessments here is the reporting tab. So when I click on the reporting, this is gonna be served as an executive summary for those printout reports that are coming. Right now, there's not much to this, but whenever we print it out, kind of similar to our existing reports where we're able to summarize a lot of the stuff within the feature set, whether it's the policies or the, uh, the planner view and all that kind of stuff, this is gonna serve as a standalone thing to explain the, the overall summary. So this will be, we can kind of put a, a bow on top of all of it. So we can skip that for a little bit too. So I'll go ahead and hit submit. And what we end up with is now that this assessment uh, has a question in it, I can run it, I can actually do it. Now, for the sake of the demo, because it's a kind of dummy data, I'm not gonna do this one, because again, if I go back to editing it, you know, it's just got that one question, that's it. I actually prepared one right before this, this demo assessment, very similar. I just did a couple more that are a little bit more realistic. So this one actually has six questions, uh, very simple, right? Each question is under its own category. You ever mess it up, that's okay. You can always reorder it. So if I want to do all users on their mobile phones go first, you can just you know, drag and drop action and that should flip it over. But for the most part, my questions are in there. The next step, once you've built that assessment frame, once you've built the questions in there is to run it, right? And the run is the main deliverable to the client. That's what we wanna think of that the client gets to see and gets to, uh, gets to act on. So that's actually what's happening when I click on any one of these assessments and it's blank. In this case, these are my actual runs. Um, you weren't seeing anything because technically we've never even attempted the assessment, right? We built it, but it's nothing's there. So in this one, I've already ran it four times. When I clicked on my demo assessment, you can see that I've got all that stuff. Uh, if you want to run the assessment again, three blue dot menu, going to be critical. You click it, you click run, it's going to generate a run of the assessment. The assessment runs name is going to be very simple. It's going to be the name of the assessment, a dash, and then the day you're trying to run it. So um, I already have some, so I won't do that, but here's four of them that I've already created. And you see a couple of different things on this initial run menu, right? You see my four assessment runs, my dates that I've run them. Um, I've got the scores of the assessments themselves. There's some scoring methodology tied to uh, the answers available. So negative questions are okay, right? And it'll tell you it's like negative six out of a possible 10. All these are in progress. And we'll take a look at, for example, this latest one that I ran. So what's happening here is when I click on a run, I'm able to see the categories that I'd set for the questions visualized in graphs. So again, a non-technical, um, somebody who's not necessarily uh, understanding of all the factors of the assessment can quickly glance at this and go like, all right, I know we're doing two questions are compliant, we're compliant, non-compliant for these ones. Oh, what do we have to do? Um, if you wanna see a more traditional breakdown of the assessments, that's still in the run, right? We go to the next tab over here for details. We see those six questions ordered in kind of the way that most people probably think of assessments, kind of like this. And when we look at it, it's uh, fairly simple, right? We've got the questions, we've got this little S fan menu, and what this does is it basically shows you the status of it, right? So compliant, non-compliant, like this one is, uh, if there's any warnings or anything else we need to look into. The F stands for flagged, so we can actually see if anything's been thrown up, so for quick notification purposes. Um, A is for attachments, it'll show a little paper clip to let you know that there's been an attachment on there. And N is for notes, to let you know if there's any additional notes that you know denote something that's worth taking a look at. So if you look, it kind of gives you a brief summary at the top. If I click on any one of these uh, questions in this assessment, it'll give me a bit of breakdown. And now that we kind of went through, I know it was a little bit slow, going through each question helps you understand what fields you're doing, right? So in this one, the category, the question, the explanation, the remediation, um, and then the partner specific information, right? It's gonna take five units at 200, 200 cost, right? In this case, it's dollars uh, per unit, helps us kind of get that, that uh, item down. And if the account manager or the assessor is running through this and they need to make a quick change and they don't necessarily wanna change the entire assessment template too, they can do that. They can go into the individual question, let's say, it's more complex than they thought and they wanna make it not available or they wanna change it up, they still have the option to do that on the fly whenever they feel like, as well as again, adding the notes, which is why those notes are the first tab, because ultimately we kind of designed it with this in mind when they went through, they could jot those down or add attachments and so on. Now I can even throw an owner on there, Ricky C, that's me. And we can see that that starts to show up so you can see who is responsible for that ticket too, or for that uh, task. So. Generally speaking, the other thing that's notable from here is if I wanted to answer these quickly, right? As you saw, I do have the option of editing and answering them as I go through. The faster way to do it, most likely for people that kind of know what they're doing and they already have a lot of these, uh, you know, notated somewhere, is just by hitting this edit responses at the top. They can run through, they can say no or yes, and they can see that it starts to flip up and, and change the way that we see it. I hit finish edit and then all of a sudden that's done, right? So the assessment's starting to get run through. Now, Based off all the stuff that we've done, in this case, the assessment's complete, right? For better or worse, we're, we're failing a lot harder than when I first started, but 
if you look at the top, we've got a bunch of different categories that help us find out exactly what is what is and what is not working. So we can also filter by like, hey, what's the non-compliant ones? What are the flagged ones and all that kind of stuff. Um, the more useful area where this comes into play is this recommendations tab. So there's kind of three things to each assessment run, right? We looked at the overall assessment summary, which now is gonna look a whole lot more red when I started. The details, which again is where you actually answer it. And then the recommendations, which is where we actually see what the plan is to fix this thing, right? So now we have the same view. We're trying to keep it as consistent as possible, but so the client understands it like, hey, to get this password on the mobile phone fixed, it's gonna take 15 monthly costs at 50 cents. That's gonna be 750 monthly. And then we also got another project cost to get people multiple screens, right? And that's gonna cost a thousand bucks. So all of a sudden the client can see the remediation costs and efforts directly from here. Um, if I wanna add something to the planner, right? This becomes a project that we wanna make viable. We're gonna go ahead and just do this with the client or before or after whatever you prefer. You click on the individual question, you click it, add that to the planner. A lot of things in Cloud Radio function off the planner, right? To, to For better visibility, for understanding with the client. Add that in there. I go, hey, let's add that to the planner. Uh, this is a productivity thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that under there. And then what's gonna happen is, as soon as I submit this, it's gonna go to our planner. It's gonna get linked over here and it's gonna give you a quick link to it. So when I click it, it's gonna take me right back to the planner. You can see it's on my planner under my recommended and it's got all the pricing information already on it. So this is priming us for when we inevitably kind of work in that that projects integration uh, to the PSAs because all of a sudden these things should be able to you know log opportunities and get you the cost that, that you need without having to re-enter the information. So other than the actual um, explanation and remediation efforts, again, all the prices are listed on the back end already for you. So that's gonna help save a lot of time and make discussions way easier for clients. Let's work our way back to that assessment run. All right, so the last kind of bit of information here is that again, that visualization of that risk matrix. So we know that we did those high risk, low risk, medium risk. How does that all tie in? How, do, how can the client visually see that, right? And in this screen itself, right, uh, you can actually pop open the charts, a little blade on the right. We also use this quite a lot in, uh, in Cloud Radial. We see the overall compliance review of it, right? Not categories, just the general gist, but even things from a cost risk analysis from a project basis or a monthly basis. So from a project basis, right, I've got a couple of those guys on there showing me what projects that uh, we're doing, right? So you can see that this one's my, my logging process, making sure that people are entering and exiting the server room. This one is my cable collecting job. And they can kind of get a visualization of going like, hey, this is a high risk, low cost. We should definitely do the logging thing. That's a good one. This one's gonna cost a lot, but it's also really risky. So maybe that's something we should address. So these things, again, not not necessarily rocket science when you're first putting in the stuff, but when you start to realize how it all comes together, it can be very complex to put all this into uh, one area. So whew, it's a lot to it. Uh, it's very, very intricate, but I think it's ultimately very valuable. So you can see that what's been happening is I ran this four times and what's very natural for assessments is I may do this today, I may do this tomorrow, I may do this in a month, and I wanna not just be able to score these things and find out how they did, but next time we do this after the remediation efforts have been met, I wanna be able to show the client that they're growing with me, right? They're not just doing work that I just throw into the ether and I go, yeah, we did it, yeah, we did that. I wanna be able to show them progress. So what's really interesting is within an assessment, now that we have multiple runs, we can compare the runs between each other, right? To show the client growth. So you can actually use the same button up top here, well, similar button to what we used to like add and stuff for a comparison when you're in an assessments runs. And that'll take the last four assessments and slot them side by side so we can see how we did. So in this case, I've got my four assessment runs and I actually ran them all on the same day, so don't be alarmed by the date. But if you look, right, we started off bad, we got some more green, we got some more green, and then I just now made it bad again. But for the most part, the client would be able to see that we're getting better and better and they can see what we've been kind of working towards in the, uh, in the comparison runs, right? So that really is the, the gist of what's happening for a lot of these. Now, without getting too overwhelming, that was a very simple one, right? Six questions, maybe it's good for a lot of people for, for some stuff, but for the most part, you'll end up looking more like the NIST assessment. The NIST assessment is something that we have, which has very uh, complex questions. There's tons of categories. There's lots of stuff to consider. So this is what a more mature assessment would look like in Cloud Radio. Again, it's gonna handle it just the same way. It's not gonna be anything different. Uh, so it scales very well as far as training goes, but you can see that you've got a way to make some really powerful stuff. That means that Again, if you were trying to draw big plans, if you're trying to get some uh, revenue opportunities and you wanna be very thorough, this tool is gonna to be pretty kick-ass to do it again within the context of the greater client portal. You've got that shared basis and you can kind of go as crazy as you want to. 
All right, so that's the gist of assessments. Now let's focus on something a little bit easier. As long as we have that core concept down, I think the rest kind of goes into it. So the assessment's one thing. The other thing that we thought about for scalability issues is, as you just saw, obviously at scale, client to client, company to company, you are not going to be doing this for every single person just because the sheer uh, amount of work that would take is insane, right? To have to build each one manually. So what Jeff and the development team kind of developed is this idea of almost like a building block approach to assessments, because we know that realistically, not every standard may apply to every single company, right? You may want to build an assessment not out of one chunk, but maybe a little bit of pick and choose. Again, like kind of like a Lego, Lego building block thing. So in the templates area, which is again, exactly the same thing as assessments, the idea was that you can build out templates of these questions and you can use these as building blocks for your actual assessments. So a common example here, what I've done is I've built three separate assessment questions and just to show you they are exactly the same thing, I can edit these templates and uh, they're gonna be the same exact fields, right? I've got the title of the, the template, but question wise, I've got the same exact thing going over and over. Um, so once I've built these out, right, I may want to build an assessment of all three of these, right? Give me the endpoint template in there, the server template, and the user template, or maybe I don't. Maybe client A needs all three of these templates in there. Maybe client B only needs the endpoint and users. They don't even have servers, right? And maybe client C needs all of them again. So it can be kind of variable. So when we go to build an assessment, I think this is really interesting how we've done this, is you would do the same motions that we just did, right? Instead of doing the, the, the test one, I can go build a new one. We're going to do it and say like template test. We're going to add a test in this one too. Same motions. We're just building that frame. But again, instead of going through and building a brand new one and writing the questions in here, instead of editing it, I can add templates directly in there. So I've, I built those out. I can feed them in and I can start to say like, hey, maybe I want to feed the endpoint template questions in here just once. Or maybe I want to do it for every endpoint. And maybe I want to replicate this for every server or every user, which is a great use case. You know, if you've got something like a, like an onboarding checklist and you need to make sure that you provision every user the same way, when you want to show that the steps have been done, I don't want to have to copy this 50 times. I want to be able to say like, yep, let's add the endpoint in there. Let's throw in another template. And let's say I've got the user template and I want to apply that once for each user, right? It's going to multiply that. And these users and, and endpoints and servers are based off of what's loaded into Cloud Radial. The users is based off of the users matched from the PSA and Office 365, and the endpoints and servers are based off of the, uh, the agents that we have deployed, and therefore the stuff we can see in our infrastructure. So the point is, again, I'm not building those questions out manually. I've basically put questions in from there. And now if I go to run this one, you can see exactly what happened, right? I'm gonna run it just like I did before, here goes, and it's going to assemble those for me. So all of a sudden, my questions are now applying to everybody. I've got my endpoint security, which I imported once, and then my user setup for my very real users, my Homer Simpson, my Michael Frederick, my Ricardo Cicchini, that's me. And you can see that that is a lot more scalable because now I don't have to build everything one by one. I can kind of deploy out these building blocks and that is the real unit of deployment in Cloud Radial. You, you push out the building blocks and then you build your assessments from there. Um, this is a little bit of a confusing concept initially because I think a lot of people will look at this and go, well, do I have to break everything apart? Can I push out one big one? In the NIST case, right, the NIST one is a very big assessment. It's got 100 questions. You do not have to part out the NIST one into 10 questions each or anything like that. You can make entire assessments uh, into your templates and push that out. So it's ultimately up to you if that's a good enough thing to run by itself, one big chunk, or if you need to build something of 100 little chunks, that's totally up to you. So you can actually even turn an assessment itself into a template and kind of revert them back and forth, which again, initially may be a little bit confusing, but it's gonna be insanely helpful for scalability as you customize the assessment on a client by client basis. So um, the next thing that I think is the most important one and why most people are, are, are considering this, right? Why, why a lot of people are in the QBR, or sorry, the uh, assessment uh, webinar is the idea of not starting from scratch. Cause I think, okay, you can build it within Cloud Radio and that's cool. And you can do that by editing and writing your questions till the cows come home. But the fact of the matter is that you may have speed issues there, right? You may already have existing material and having to pull up stuff on multiple screens and match that is gonna be a little bit not viable. So of course, the elephant in the room is this button right here, import assessment. And if you click on import assessment, you have the option of directly uploading uh, your Excel file in here and having that pop in, but hold on a minute, right, caveat. There are some um, specific fields that we have to match into Cloud Radialese, right, to make sure it works. If you click on the import assessment, you're gonna get taken uh, with this little question mark to an, an article that covers this. And again, 
we're going to be performing this live here in a second. But the idea is that not only do we have documentation on the first bit, right? We talked about the assessments. I've got some stuff in here that show you some some general things, just like we talked about now. Um, I've got the academy course on assessments uh, working right now. There's a new learning path in our training academy on understanding and using assessments. This is still not fully complete. We don't have all the material in here, but again, for a quick introduction and overview, we have about a 12 minute video that covers a lot of what I just said. So heads up so you don't have to watch this webinar like a thousand times. Um, anyways, so as we go through that question mark that I said, when you import an assessment, click on this for Excel files is gonna take you to this specific uh, KB article. And it's gonna show you all the fields that we need and we will be mapped to, right? As I showed you, when you build a question, lots of stuff to match but we try to make it easy as possible. And for those that are a little bit more technical, I'll break down every single bit of it and how all the logic works. And if you're looking for a blank sheet that you can get so you can upload your stuff, you can get one directly from a link near the top. It's right here. So for the sake of example, what Jeff and I discussed before this webinar, we thought would be interesting is something realistic, right? So let's just say you are in a PCI industry. And in fact, we got a PCI PDF, right? So here's a PCI PDF on a self-assessment self -assessment questionnaire. These things are very common in a lot of regulated spaces. You'll find a lot of these PDFs, a lot of the stuff out there in the, in the space. And you'll see that there's lots of uh, stuff in here, but the most part, they'll break down everything you need to translate it into Cloud Radio, right? You have the, the, uh, you know, the, the different types of potential responses, you have the remediation, you have the explanations in here. It's just a matter of either taking your existing library or finding something that can convert these to some kind of Excel file or copying them over yourselves or something that's kind of a mix of all those. But the point is we have to get this into the Cloud Radio document. Now, lucky for me and lucky for you, so you don't have to watch me painfully figure this out, I already have that kind of broken down. So here's an example of that actual Excel file in all of its glory, right? So it's basically that same PDF we just saw, but put into a format. Now, this is not the Cloud Radio format, right? The Cloud Radio format actually looks like this one. Here's a blank example. So again, relatively simple matching the stuff. You got my category, my question, my explanation, my, my type and my text answer. And again, that Excel, I'm sorry, that KB article that we looked at is gonna be critical for finding out all the nitty gritty of all this stuff. But for the most part, all you really need to know is this matches what we were looking at earlier with those, uh, those different categories. And again, I'm trying to convert this thing into a cloud radial format. So it does take a bit of brain power. It's usually not that difficult, but you have to kind of visualize what you want out of it and how things map. So you can see that it's not always going to be perfect, but generally speaking, I've got this requirement section one, and maybe I've got a bunch of these different things in here. And these are what I'm verbally, or I guess mentally thinking are more like the questions, right? So for the sake of example, I'm going to copy over this 1.1 established firewall and router configuration all the way to this 1.16 requirement to review firewall. So let's copy those and let's pop my cloud radial Excel sheet back over. And this isn't gonna be the category because the category again is the, the breakdown area. So I'm gonna copy these under the questions. So these are my six questions or yeah, uh, seven questions. So what I'll do as well is I might slap a category in there so they're sorted. So we'll just say category one example. And we'll make sure that that is uh, applied to all of them. We wanna make sure that that's the same category that all these fall under. Now explanation, I don't think I saw that. Let's take a double check. Not really. I have these testing procedure questions, which fall more in line with our uh, remediation efforts, right? Or the, the non, not remediation, sorry. The, uh, I already forgot the field. Oh, goodness. The evaluation. That would be more of what you would look like, you would look at to fix the, the issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, right? I go, hey, let's grab that out of there. Copy that. And let's go back into that evaluation. And let's paste that in the same exact order. It's the same fields, one up. So there it is, and I know it looks a little funky. We'll fix that in a sec. Anything else we should look for? Let's see. Uh, the owner, right, we have that as well. That's obviously the task owner. This is unassigned, so we really don't have that. The area, not sure what that would map to, but again, nothing stopping you from getting creative. And then I see that their question set, they already have a recommended one. They have yes, no, and not available, which we know is possible in Cloud Radio. That's actually one of the ones that you can make. But even if it weren't, uh, you can still make that a fair game uh, within Cloud Radio, so why not? So let's let's take a look at how we can make that a thing in Cloud Radio. So in this spreadsheet now, I've got those questions, I've got the category, the explanation, I don't have that just yet, but that's okay. Really, we're looking at this next section, the type, right, the answer, the text answer responses. And what this is, if we go back to that uh, Excel document, I'm sorry, the KB, we have the breakdown again of every single one. So it'll tell you, hey, type is the type of responses, right? Is it a list of things or is it a text-based thing? Just like we saw before, do you want it to be a yes, no question? or freehand. In this case, 
we want list because we want that to be yes, no, and not available. And then this will tell you the scoring methodology, right? Compliant things are gonna score plus two, non-compliant minus two, or something in between, and all the way down to the text answers themselves. Um, so really what we're looking for is probably something like this. So the, I know this is more advanced, of course, but to make something that is truly custom, you can define your own set of answers and even tell Cloud Radio what maps to what, right? So is yes the compliant answer or is no the compliant answer? You can customize all of that. It'll just tell you what symbols to put after your responses to correlate to the things before. So, you know, yes is compliant in this case, sort of is partially compliant, not relevant. We'll put this little equal is, is uh, irrelevant and that is a zero in scoring. Unanswered is partially non-compliant and no is straight up non-compliant. So I'll spare you the, the lecture on all that stuff. Really, all we need to know is we want to change the answer set to not just a yes, no question in this column, but we also want to add a not available. So we'll do a not at NA and we'll put an equal sign because that's going to be our, our marker for doesn't matter. So we're going to take this stuff, these four things, five things, six things, can't count. And we're going to go all the way down and we're going to copy those for, I guess, pretty much all these guys. Let's zoom out here. I'll make my tinier Excel. And we're going to paste that. Cool. So functionally, what I've done is now I've I've started to break down. Yeah, I've, I've mapped some fields over. Now, this looks kind of horrific. So what we're going to do to make it a little bit more legible is I'm going to highlight the entire sheet. And just to make sure everything doesn't freak out in case we brought over some nasty stuff from the copy, I'm going to go ahead and clear the formatting of the sheet. So now we have something that's a little bit more uh, falls in line, right, with everything else. And you can see that this this guy is kind of big, the evaluation, but that's okay. We can handle it. Um, so I think that's good. Let's see what this does. And again, I could always go through and for scalability purposes, add more explanations, add some stuff, manipulate this as fast as I want. So we're gonna go ahead and save this to my desktop like a savage. And we're gonna call this the PCI Excel test. Cool. Let's close out of that. We got that kind of built. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Cloud Radial and go back into my assessments and same thing. I'm not gonna build an assessment frame. I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm literally just going to throw it in there and Cloud Radio is gonna take care of the rest. So I'm gonna import. That's gonna go, hey, do you wanna learn how to do it? And we just kind of did. We're gonna go choose file. And we're gonna go, hey, let's do the, uh-oh, I have two, this one, the PCI Excel test. And we're gonna call this the PCI test. And that'll be the name of our assessment within the portal. So, okay, so it says updating, it may take a few minutes. Now this one's gonna be real quick because ultimately I did like eight questions, six questions, uh, but for the most part, it's not gonna be that bad, right? It's gonna be uh, pretty quick, unless you have something mega massive, which it still will handle, but it might load for a second. So the PCI test, did it work? Uh, let's find out, let's run it, see what happens. Did the fields map the way we thought they should? Well, so far so good. It looks like I got my scores coming in. So if I click on them, what's happening? Well, I got my category one, I have my seven unanswered questions in there, and the details show that indeed I have all of my questions mapped. If I click on any one of them, to no surprise, I've got the questions, uh, I've got the evaluation stuff. I'm sorry, the yep, the evaluation criteria into the evaluation field. So again, not quite rocket science, uh, just something that can be really speedy if you can take something that you have and put it in here and make it work. So same thing, right? We're not reinventing the wheel. I'm giving you kind of a couple of different options to do it. So ultimately, whether you want to do the simplest approach, which is just building the assessment within here and just add question, add question, add question. That's one way, right? You want to speed it up a little bit more. You want to build your templates out and that way you can go, question set, question set, question set, that's cool. Or whether you want to take your existing Excels and just go boom, right there, one shot, that's cool too. And you can always take that Excel, save it as a template or even use the same thing, right? We can take that same Excel file and import it as a template and use that just as a building block. So you can really do it in kind of whatever way you want to. Um, I think the last notable thing, and then I promise I will shut up, sorry, uh, is, the, uh, is the updating of these Excel files. Because something else that you'll find is that Throughout all of this, I think logistically it makes sense, right? We wanna have these runs, so we wanna be able to have attempts of the assessment, right? We wanna be able to customize them. But something that might happen down the line is, you may think of you know, tomorrow's assessment, you go, we need to change that, that doesn't apply anymore, or we forgot to add something, and I don't wanna have to make a brand new assessment and carry that with me, and it can get kind of sloppy to move data over and over again. So this one, very easy concept. All we're doing is the same way that I can uh, import assessments, Right, and I can, I can add them in. I can actually overlay existing stuff and update them on top of it. So that way it'll replace the fields and make sure that uh, they, are, they are updated. And that is based off of a value that we're seeing in here. Uh, I actually closed it, so let's pull that back up quick. Do -do -do. 
there's a little field at the very end of this, and again, this is referenced within the uh, the KB article on this content update key. I'm sorry, this update key. And basically, what happens is whenever you upload something, it'll actually uh, generate an update key, so that way we tie that uh, question to the key and not to the question itself, which means you're free to change the the question numbering and all that kind of stuff, uh, the question you know answer type, and it's going to know exactly which one to to match it to. Now, very last thing, I promise. Uh, how would you do that scalably, right? If I don't have that original document, like Jeff was saying, the whole premise was that this is built on an import export functionality. So we know import, we know importing from something that was not yet in Cloud Radial, but now that it is in Cloud Radial, I can click on the thing and export it out and that's gonna do it for me, right? It's gonna take that, here's my assessment template, my template test, well actually, let's do it with the PCI one, since that was the one we used, and we're gonna get it right here. So here's that thing, right? It's been uploaded into Cloud Radial, it's already reformatted for us, so we can see now it's gonna have a little bit more values plugged in because it's been through the ringer a little bit, right? So everything's nice and clean. That update key and content key are filling out because now Cloud Radial knows where they fit, and you can kind of go through and update it uh, as you need or quickly uh, bulk edit this. So, whew, I hope that answers some questions. Last, last thing, thing. I so, <laughs> so the, okay, never <laughs> the, the import export stuff, again, what we really want to do, and we, we're going to do this a lot through the community, is make sure that everybody has a chance to share. Um, you know, we participate in a number of, of forums. Uh, we've got our own community. And what we want to do is make it really simple to get information from one partner who's doing a good job to another partner that needs some help. Um, and so uh, again, we're working with vendors, we're working with uh, these user groups, uh, these um, peer groups to make sure that we can always uh, move information around from one partner to a partner, again, so that we can kind of build a best practices uh, approach that uh, becomes more common uh, and more consistent uh, across the industry. So. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Well, we, we had a lot of questions around that, uh, around templates. Um, what templates are available right now? Is it just the NIST assessment for now? Is that in there? Currently, yes. The NIST assessment's available on the community, right? We have a section for that under community.cloudradial. And I believe it's also available within the assessment uh, article itself. There's a section right here under the general understanding of using assessments that has the both the Excel file that you can practice uploading and also a zip file that goes directly into your content. Uh, for those in the know of this, uh, assessment templates are content types. So you can actually push those out. So that zip file will be a content type. And yeah, it's under here. We have a new section under the shared content area of the community for assessments. So as things come out, right, again, first foray, it's been a week, it's not been that long. We definitely plan on adding more sample content to it, but NIST is the only one for today. Makes sense. Uh, uh, there's also some questions around, uh, Do is, is there any sort of automatic uh, question answering based on agent information or is it, is it a, a fully manual process? So the, the, right now the assessments are all manual. Um, we're looking at how to link some of those up to the assessment test, but there's really, again, you think about this as two, two moving pieces. What we're trying to do is automate as much as we can through policy and automatic reporting. Right, so again, right now, if those things fall out of compliance, then automatically you should be alerted or your client should be alerted through the policy process. The assessments are a little more interesting because it's not always clear sometimes what you need to do to fix that or if that's really an issue, right? Because there's that weighting of impact. And so, um, so again, right now the assessments, think about the assessments as being all manual and the policies is being all automated. And I think we're gonna stick with that process, um, but over time, I'm sure we're gonna find some ways to marry that data back together and integrate it more, more efficiently. Uh, Kevin H asks, uh, you know, could this be used for due diligence studies on behalf of, the, uh, of, of his clients? Absolutely. I mean, this is a great pre-sales, it's a great onboarding tool. And remember to, this is something that, again, this is client facing and your clients can actually, if you let them do it, will actually be able to create their own assessments and run their own pieces. So if you think about HIPAA, for example, there's a, there's a technical, an IT version of HIPAA, but there's also a physical version of HIPAA, right? So, I mean, which gets down to the way the files are stored, locks on the doors, things that aren't really under the typical MSP control, you could create different assessments and just ask the, um, 
you know, your, your compliance administrator or your client to fill out that assessment um, to do stuff. One of the things that's really powerful about user filled out assessments, it actually makes them stop and think about the answer they just gave. Right. So, for example, if you if in, in a HIPAA case, you know, if, if the question is, are, you know, medical records uh, kept under lock and key on a nightly basis? If the answer is no, then hopefully the client starts to go, like, I don't think that's the right answer. I know that's the correct answer, but it doesn't sound like to me that's the, the right answer. So there's a cognitive dissonance that sometimes people get when they um, answer a question on the assessment if they do that themselves versus if you answer it for them and so I really I think I really one of the powerful pieces of this is not only for the uh, partner to do the assessment for the clients to participate in that process as well all right um, let's see here sorry just a, a whole lot of questions about the assessments and, and, and importing and exporting them um, uh, is it possible to assign internal resources to an assessment task? Uh, can they complete the assessment without giving them full admin access to the entire CR portal? Cloud Radio portal. No. So, well, again, they, they could, I take that back, they could, oh, well, they could in their own company, right? One of the things that will be out probably next quarter is partner, um, partner uh, rights list. So again, just like we do with users and they have uh, basically access rights uh, and access control list, uh, we need to take that same concept into the partner administrators. Uh, and so what you'll see is what it looks like right now is when we do the projects piece of this, uh, which will tie in more information, because again, all of this now feeds together from assessments to the planner back to the projects. Uh, and my guess is when we roll out the project piece next quarter, we'll actually roll out uh, really enhanced uh, uh, partner granularity in the rights list too. Got a question from William G. Uh, can you delete assessments? Yes, let me show you that real quick. It's pretty easy, right? If you have an assessment and it's relevant runs, so let's just take my, my template test. Uh, I can delete an individual run by clicking on the edit option within that run and using the old faithful red trash can. Same thing for the overall assessment, right? Edit the assessment and all its relevant runs and delete them. Or if I just want to ship them over and I don't want those gone forever, we're going to click on the blue dots and go get out of here in the archives. And that is going to get that whole thing out. And then that's where this third tab comes in. You can always restore those as well without deletion. Like everything in Cloud Radio, it yes, and it's we've made it as complex as possible. So. <laughs> yes, you don't want me answering. I'll take like 20 minutes to do it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Kevin L. Uh, had a kind of a, a general question of, of in a pre-sales context when you're using this sort of assessment, um, how do you kind of envision that working, you know, uh, as far as, you know, there's there's no, you know, as far as having clients and endpoints actually in there, end users and stuff like that in there, how do you recommend sort of uh, that, that process goes for pre-sales? So you've got two ways to do it. So if you do the assessment, um, again, should be next week, we'll have... Uh, printed reports you'll be able to generate from this. Again, you can download the Excel file and do anything you want to with that data today. It's not really the best solution for quick and convenient. Uh, so we will have more, uh, we will have reporting next week. So you'll be able to take these assessments and turn those into Word documents and tweak them the way that you want. But one of the things we're seeing in the pre-sales process is to set that client up as a, uh, a client right from the get-go, from the time that you're starting to engage with them. Uh, if you can get, um, you know, some users loaded in, or you can get maybe the agent on a few machines, you can do the assessments. So when you sit down and, sh and talk with the client in the, you know, assessment evaluation phase, so you've gone in there, done your due diligence, you're prepared, you've got your information ready, rather than going with a, with a pile of paper, uh, we'd rather you go in with your laptop and, and basically sit down them, show them their portal, show them the assessments that you ran, show them basically what the information that looks like is coming from their endpoints, show them the planner piece. Uh, so basically what the client is seeing in that assessment piece isn't just your expertise, but they're seeing what they're going to use on a daily basis to monitor their expenditures, right? And to monitor what you do for them. And so that's a, you know, to go from a paper quarterly meeting review process into like an online planner view that they're going to deal with from day one, extremely powerful. 
Um, and so again, the faster you can get this information into Cloud Radial and the sooner in the sales process you can get Cloud Radial in front of your client, the more you can demonstrate, I think, um, your differentiation against your competition. Uh, you were, unless you're doing a very good ventriloquist impression, which is pretty good. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. Sorry. I got this clicky keyboard, and so I started typing on the clicky keyboard answering other questions. Um, okay, well, I think that's uh, a lot of other good ones coming up here. Um, let me, uh, let's see, what is the best way to verify a client has a specific GPO created that is uh, one of our standards? Scripting can pull this information in, so wondering if it's possible to apply this to a policy or assessment. That's a good question, and right now we're not doing very much. In fact, we're doing nothing with GPOs. Um, so, um, but you know, that's the kind of stuff we'd like to see. You know, we started to dip our toes in the Active Directory, local Active Directory, and GPOs with uh, uh, the Data Agent now uh, with the desktop piece. And, and now, like everything else, once we dip our toes in there, that generates a ton of feedback on whether we should be syncing with uh, local Active Directory and whether we should be pulling more of those policies off. Um, so I, what I would do right now is, again, like everything else, add it to the, to the feature list, the feature request list in the product, uh, because those are the things, again, and now we've got, you know, hundreds of great ideas out there. Um, but again, all of that stuff really does help us focus uh, what we're working on and the urgency that we work on it with. So, all right. And just to kind of finish up, because we are coming up on the hour here, um, uh, there was a couple questions, so I'll kind of sum them up. Uh, just as, as, as how assessments and policies sort of work together. Will they one day become one thing? Or are they separate for now? What was sort of the long term plans as far as how those two, um, you know, uh, work with each other? Right now, again, the, the policy pieces will all be automated. Again, the goal of the policies really are to basically give your client a daily QBR of the, of the core status of their, of their monitoring systems, right? Um, the assessments are, again, they're, they're point in time evaluations, right? And so the assessments, um, they're, they're manual, um, they can be time consuming. One of the things that's in here as well as with the assessments or a run, uh, you can just click a, a button and duplicate the run. Um, so if you go under runs, uh, duplicate, you can duplicate a run and then basically go back and just make changes to what's different, right? And so we wanna try to make that speedy and convenient. Uh, so again, it doesn't take you three hours to complete a, a assessment from scratch. You can just focus on the things that have changed. Um, but right now, most of those things have a, a research phase to it that I think is just hard to get away from. Uh, and even on the GPO side, sometimes it's very hard to, uh, um, again, evaluate exactly what the right answer is. So, Okay. Well, um, uh, we got a ton of questions. That's actually one of our, I, uh, this is easily our, our best attended webinar so far. I got almost 300 uh, attendees here. Um, so we got a lot of questions. If we did not get to your question, uh, we're going to have this uh, video up a little later on our YouTube channel. Uh, again, youtube.com slash cloud radial. Um, go and check it out, out there. I'll have it up in the next couple hours. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, feel free to ask it there and, and we'll get back to you there. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, we will, uh, this is our, our, our probably our last uh, webinar for the year, but we will be back to two a month here uh, at, at the start of the new year. If we don't see you before then, everybody have a great Christmas and a happy new year. Yeah, and I want to I want to just say a special thank you to our partners who have really helped us formulate assessments. Um, again, we, we have we have listened to all of you. Um, we've done we've we've accommodated everything that we can. Um, and again, I just I just can't thank you guys enough for sharing uh, your best practices and your insights and your thoughts with us. Um, on the assessments tool. And um, again, the whole product, um, just again, we, we've always shaped the product based on, on your feedback. So uh, again, thank you very much uh, for attending, but again, thank you for uh, participating in this process, um, this cloud radio journey that we're on over the last few years. So again, thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody All have right. a great day. Take care, bye-bye, stay safe. <laughs>